Should we allow our kids to play violent video games? And then she also asked if they're a sin. Oh, the sin question. You know, we are so sin conscious. So, so let me say, first of all, you do what you as a parent think is good for your child. But it's not your child who is the boss. You're the boss. And one day they will come to an age of maturity and then they'll be the boss of their life. But God put you in charge. Uh, to, to be loving, to be kind, to encourage them. And so I personally do not think it is helpful for children to be inundated with these violent videos where heads are blown off, blood everywhere, because it can make you so accustomed to that, that you, you think life is a video game. It's not. Now, is it sin? You know, don't be so sin conscious. Be aware of the life that's in you. Say, Jesus, what do you think I should do? And you'll be amazed that he will guide you and help you. But my personal opinion just on the surface is, no, I don't think that's helpful. Find some other fun game, uh, but not blowing people's heads off. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. And, uh, you know, kind of uh, going along with, you know, the other hot topics, Jeremy messages us and he says, he says, what stand should the church take on Black Lives Matter or on defund the police? Well, uh, you're really trying to get me into trouble here. Now I'm gonna say this. Every life matters. Black lives matters. Every life matters. Every person is important. That should go without. And if anybody thinks that because of their race and because of their social status, they are not important, then we need to say to that person, if it's a black person or a Chinese person, your life matters. So, of course, every life matters. Now, it's a different thing that uh, political organizations can take on these names, uh, names uh, th that everybody would agree with, and, and make them something else. And so, in that sense, I think that's what the organization Black Lives Matter has done according to their website. So that I'm not in agreement with at all, uh, the, the, the attempt to destroy the nuclear family. But the, the three words, Black Lives Matter, of course, who, who, how can you be a Christian and not agree with that? The organization is a different thing. Now, to fund the police, it seems to me that we need police. And uh, Romans, uh, in Romans 13 talks about that, that they're here for a purpose. Uh, to help those who, who do good and, and, and to watch out for those who break the law. And so I think if, if there's certainly some uh, bad police officers. There's some bad preachers, uh, bad mechanics. But uh, I'm glad we have the police. Okay, we better hurry on. Any we, other questions? We've got one more question, okay. and that comes from China. And she asks, is wearing a face mask the beginning of the government's attempt to control us? Ah, I think politicians are like lemmings. You know, uh, one, one, one city council decides to face mask mandatory, let's say maybe in Calgary, and then Saskatoon says, oh, well, we better do what they do. And then Montreal, Toronto, they, you know, a lot of these people, they don't even know what they're doing. They just follow me because they don't want to face the press conference where the journalist says, well, you know, we heard in such and such a place they're doing this and that, and when are we going to do that? And they get all, uh, I, I don't know, maybe... Some people who study human behavior may look at this and how pliable we humans are and go along with whatever we are told. Because you remember a few months ago, we were told by the scientists that face masks uh, were no good, not helpful now, mandatory. So science is sure changing quickly these days. But, you know, as far as individual governmental officials, they are just uh, doing so that what they need to do so that the press won't be hunting them down.